Hey, Bobby Manning here. Welcome back to our back center on the Garn Report. We got a shoot around edition of the show ahead of game six between the Celtics and Heat tonight. Heat just wrapping up their shoot around over uh, by Emerson, the theater district, and We'll see what kind of injury report they're going to come out with out of this one. I heard P.J. Tucker, Victor Oladipo talk today, Tyler Hero will be questionable once again for this game. Celtics, meanwhile, still going through their day-to-day cycle of Robert Williams and Marcus Smart being questionable for these games with their knee and ankle ailments that they're nursing. Both look good against Miami. No concerns, no issues coming out of it after that win. Uh, overwhelming second half victory for the Celtics there after some first half disappointments and a lot of the talk going into that game was not getting complacent, not needing the punch back, not needing to suffer a tough loss to play their best basketball and it took a little while in that game, it took a long string of turnovers. Fortunately, all the bad stuff got out of, way, out of the way really early so they were able to go in the halftime, do the adjustments, film work that they usually do in halftime and come out firing to start the third quarter. Four straight buckets, four straight stops. Just a dominant defensive effort that was so historic, so awe-inspiring how badly the Heat performed offensively that you got to think some of it was just the Heat being dreadful on that night. Now, you did see video going around Twitter of Jimmy Butler, Kyle Lowry getting off the bus, moving really gingerly into the team hotel. Uh, but the Celtics... Even though myself and others are looking at this series and saying, this is over. You see how the Heat are looking physically right now. You see Tyler Hero status, perhaps multiple weeks going down in this one. And you basically come out of it saying that this is basically done. You, you don't see any way that the Heat can get back into this. You don't see how they can string enough baskets together. And with Robert Williams and Marcus Smart out there, it's such a detriment to Bam Adebayo getting going that you don't know where to look for buckets. It's Victor Oladipo, it's Duncan Robinson. So I think this is done. I don't see any way that the Heat win a game like this unless the Celtics have another 24 turnover avalanche, which was historic in itself to start this series. Uh, most turnovers in a game in a couple of seasons, going back to 2018 in that Game 3 loss. Now, that was here in Boston. That was a very electric crowd. Celtics made a push late in that one, too. So, for much of the brunt of this series, the Celtics have been playing the better basketball. The Heat have really been struggling to score in the half court. They come out of last game with 58.8 points per 100 in the half court. Just an unimaginable number. And you don't know how much confidence they have in themselves after that being able to go back to Miami for a game seven even now everything changes if Smart and Rob are out tonight but if they're fully loaded on the Celtics side I don't see a pass for Miami to win this one now they can muck it up they can keep it close they can string together stops themselves and they can come out with a ton of energy in this one and maybe just hack away and try to foul and get away with a bunch of stuff uh, but other than that I just don't see a path right now. When they went smaller, Jason Tatum torched them. In the second half, two-man game, as I talked about with Derek White just a few minutes ago at shoot around, the screening and high rolling for White was able to rip apart Miami's defense in a variety of looks. And then the Celtics were able to go small as well and match some of those lineups and get Brown and Tatum going into the second half. So the Celtics have just had an answer for everything Miami's thrown their way in this one. Miami, as I said, on post game after game five, a surprisingly thin team. Same deal against Milwaukee. The Celtics' depth surprisingly better than Milwaukee's. And once again here, stunningly better than Miami's because Miami had the most depth all year. But you take out Hero, you make Lowry unplayable, essentially, as he has been the last two nights here. And their team with out a lot of options that's frankly trying to reach right now just to get their offense going and that's hurting them in turn on defense so that's what I'm seeing that's what gives me little to no hope in Miami in this one and the Celtics it's going to be an electric atmosphere there with a chance to make their first NBA finals in 12 years you just see the weight of this opportunity Grant Williams talking at shoot around just a few minutes ago about the mindset going into a game like this where some teams could potentially get a little ahead of themselves. Yeah, you can't look past a team at, at any stage. Um, you can't think about the next game before you take care of the one that you're focused on. And for this team especially, um, this is a team that's going to come out 
and give you their best shot and their best punch. And you have to be willing to withstand that and also compete through it because uh, this isn't a team that's just going to lie down. They don't have guys like that on their team. So um, for us, it's a matter of understanding that today is the most important day for us. Um, you can't look past it. Um, you want to take care of this on your home court and you want to make sure that not only you come out with the right intensity, but you come out engaged because you don't want to give any hope or life to a team that um, may have been dealing with some cool injuries and everything like that. But um, you don't want to give them any chance to kind of have that exuberance, that pep to come back and, and hopefully bounce back. So for us, we were in that position last series. So we understand the the intensity and physicality and everything that you kind of have to play with and expect to see. So for us, it's just a matter of now we're going from, I guess, uh, Amy said, the hunted to the hunter. So we have to do a great job of, of, of adapting to that and being consistent in our own mentality. So if the Celtics do win tonight, if they do move on and take care of business, it will be the Golden State Warriors June 2nd, a week from yesterday, who will host the winner of the Heat or Celtics, whichever team moves on and the Celtics have the chance to become that team, the newest representative of the East, holding the Larry Bird Trophy, which... We'll see whether or not Larry's actually here to present it. And there will be an East Finals MVP now for the first time ever awarded tonight. Steph Curry coming away with that achievement out of the West. We'll have coverage live. Josue Pavone, Shrey Blakely, all of us back at the Garden tonight for Game 6. 8.45 again tip-off and we'll have post-game going right after. Perhaps previewing the NBA Finals or a Game 7 between these two teams. You know which way I'm leaning. As always, good to hear from perspective of, on the Celtics that they're looking at it a different kind of way. Sometimes the media and the team perspective just have to veer two different ways and make sense in this circumstance. But I think the Heat are done. What do you think? Tell us below in the comments. And, of course, support our sponsors, com.com slash garden, 40% off a premium subscription, sleep help, meditation, yoga, all the different things you need going into tonight and the NBA Finals if you're stressed out ahead of time. And of course, HelloFresh.com, HelloFresh.com slash Playoff16. Be some free nights coming up without games, but once the finals get going, you're going to be up late watching those games and wanting to focus less of your time on dinner. Well, late on instructions, prepackaged ingredients, they'll all make it easier on HelloFresh, and you'll get 16 free meals, three free gifts by signing up and helping out CLNS Media, HelloFresh.com slash Playoff16. I'm Bobby Manning. We'll see you tonight live from TD Garden.